It's fun by day and fright by night. Let's talk about the fun by day. It's tricks and treats, everybody. Hello, everybody. Alongside Don Helbig, I'm Ryan Sir, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans because that's who we are and that's who we care about. So Ryan, Tricks and Treats opens this Sunday. Yeah, uh, so let's do the PSA again at the top of the uh, the top of the show, but uh, it runs 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. However, uh, although Halloween Haunt opens September 20th, Friday, September 20th, uh, the park is not open during the day on the 21st. It's a private sellout. So the park will open at like 6 or 7 p.m. on 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 Saturday for the Halloween event for Halloween Haunt. Uh, but it starts September 22nd, runs through November 3rd. So it's one of the longer runs of Tricks and Treats, which is really cool. But um, <coughs> lots of stuff that has the veneer of being new, but is very similar to what they had in the past. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, I know their marketing is the new, you know, new this year is tricks and treats. It's not really new. I mean, like you said, every time, every year there's something new with entertainment and all that anyway with it. But um, it's really, when you look at tricks and treats, you know, what it is, it's the ultimate kids Halloween party. Mm-hmm. Uh, when they first launched, um, you know, the, the daytime thing at King's Island back in 2008. Uh, the, then we sat around the room talking about what can we do was, you know, uh, we have this big immersive, you know, scare you know, here for, for the adults and all that. But uh, the kids deserve to have something, too, and the family of the young children. So what can yeah. we do? So it's kind of evolved from that where uh, it started out. Remember when it was out in the picnic grove? Yeah, and they had some things out there, and then they tried to move it just in the planet Snoopy, and then it's kind of you know, but it's kind of evolved. But it's really, um, it's a really nice event. It kind of developed with with COVID because they weren't going to do haunt, so they needed something uh, Halloweenish, you know, in in the fall. And I think it, uh, you know, it, it appealed to guests of all ages. It wasn't just a kid event; it appeals to guests of all ages because you've got. Uh, the culinary experience with it. You've got uh, the decor, you've got the fun shows. There's plenty of activities for kids to do. Plus you have all your favorite rides, you know, open. So, you know, for the kids, uh, Planet Snoopy, Camp Snoopy, you know, the whole kids area is open uh, Mm -hmm. during the day from 11 to seven on the Sundays and on the Saturdays from 11 till what, six when Haunt opens. So it starts to close down around five, I think, right? Most of the time, but by the time Haunt opens, you know, they, they close down the kids area. So just be advised about that. If you're going on a Saturday and you're going to stay late, the kids area will close. But, um, you know, it's just a, a fun way to uh, for families to, you know, enjoy the, the Halloween season at Kings Island. The kids, uh, there's costume contests so they can dress up. That's always fun for the kids. Trick or treat stops. We mentioned the shows, the, the characters, the Peanuts characters, you know, they're dressed up for the fall. It's fun to see Linus and Charlie Brown and Lucy and Sally, uh, you know, all, all decked out for the fall. So just a, a way to kind of, um, you know, experience King's Island a little different, you know, than you would on a hunt night or any other time of the year. Just it's more, I always word more relaxed you know, kind of atmosphere because it's just really about the families and, and just spending that quality time, you know, with the kids. Yeah. What was the event called before tricks and treats? Cause tricks and treats came with 2020. Oh, there was like Halloween fest. There was the great Hallow pumpkin fest. fest. Yeah. yeah great the great pumpkin pumpkin fest. Fest. Nick retreat a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, yeah. Um, so there's been all kinds of different, but I like tricks and treats. And I think that's something that can have a long shelf life. You know, oh, yeah. I think if, if they ever wanted to kind of merge the the best of both worlds between night and day into one thing, I think the tricks and treats, you know, name could could kind of stand for that. It's you know, it, it definitely says family when it says tricks and treats. So, uh, you know, when you're talking about there's all kinds of different Halloween events, you know, in the greater Cincinnati area, you know, that, that kids can do. There's, you know, all the different pumpkin patches and, uh, you know, different uh, events like that. But. I think, you know, for the total package, you know, this is the place to take the kids in the fall, Kings Island. Yeah, lots of competition. And I think they're aware of that because remember the zoo? Um, since yeah, they're going to open up. A, a, they're going to really, you know, ramp it up this year, too. So you're right, a lot of competition. 
Wasn't uh, there but, another one that announced? Was it the Newport Aquarium is going to Newport Aquarium is going to do some things? Yeah. So there's a lot of like it's a very competitive time of year in the fall. You know whether you're looking for nighttime or the daytime, but that just that again that that value for the total package. I, I think tricks and treats, you know, is really going to be the where the families are going to find the best value during the fall. Yeah, and it's it's funny because. That this was the silver lining to the 2020 2020 season was horrible. Like I don't even think of it, but this upgrade over the Hollow Fest is so substantial. It was substantial, um, and it became like the you know the food event. I really like the fact that it allowed, um, you know, the culinary team at Kings Island, you know, the pastry chef for that to really showcase their talents mm-hmm. and. You know, they come up with these, you know, just amazing creations in the sweet spot. You have to make sure that you stop in the sweet spot and just check out what they've what they've uh, done for the for the fall, because uh, these treats are amazing. Yeah, I like to look at them in addition to eat them like I stop in the sweet spot sometimes without the intention of purchasing anything uh, just to look. Because, like I said, I, I think I see pastries as also a work of art in the Halloween yeah. stuff and, and a lot of the Christmas stuff, too, is like. um. A, a lot of um you know stuff that looks cool you yeah, know they had no, no. um the rest and bunt cake that they had a few years ago which i've been they informed is not coming back unfortunately mm-hmm. Do you like remember the chocolate dipped bananas yes yes i got one of those those were amazing you could get so basically for the for those of you who have no idea what we're talking about they take a banana they put it in hot fudge and then they roll it in whatever you want m&ms peanuts stuff like that and I remember they, they had no idea what they had on their hands. It was like five bucks. And then the next day it was six. And then the next day it was seven. And the line was still out the door. So you can't stop the door. And I, I remember, uh, you know, it was a big milestone when the individual that came up with that idea, you know, they sold their 1,000th really? chocolate dip banana. Yeah, I mean, that was a big deal. I remember taking the picture for social media for Kings Island. And it was a huge deal. And, uh, you know, proud moment for, for uh, you know, that individual and also the sweet spot. But it's, uh, you know, they're really, it's really an opportunity for, for the, you know, the team there to kind of show off what they can do. Now, you said you walk in. I mean, yeah, it, it's art, you know, looking at what they've done. But it's very hard to walk out and, you know, not have purchased a couple of different items. But it's also, you know, uh, it's different types of food that are available around the park. They've got those Halloween themed, you know, names to them. And yeah, uh, as of this recording, you know, again, this is going to uh you know, just a matter of days before it opens when this episode will will drop. But as of this recording, we have not seen what the full menu is for mm-hmm. tricks and treats. But what they always do have, it's uh, you know different than what you're gonna get at any other time of the year. Uh, there were you know just a lot of fun things that you want to try. Yeah, and you know it's uh, we can say with pretty good confidence that it's going to be really good stuff. Sometimes they have stuff that's like risky like they had some sort of like pumpkin squash pizza one year that i didn't think that was very good that's the only thing that comes out that comes to mind as far as like they had something and it wasn't great but well they had some different kind of wings too with the different sauce they put on it you know it had some like devil's kick or whatever they called it i mean it was um those were amazing the wings yeah um the best thing that they had like the soups that they have in the french corner well the french corner is like going away i forgot about that they put up or, or something. They put up a sign saying the French Corner is currently closed. Expect a new experience for fall of 2024. So either they're just like it's closed for the season. They're going to reopen it for that or it's going to become another bar. So one of the two. Is you know, happen. I hope it I hope that the menu items there stay because that had become one of my you know top places to have a meal. Yeah, there are a couple of different uh, sandwiches there that I really like. So hopefully that's not the case, Ryan, that it does just become another bar. But um, but, you know, a, a sleeper spot during the tricks and treats is always, uh, you know, over uh, near the fest house. You know, you want to uh, the name escapes me at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's uh, no, no, it's they got the, oh, wishbone. The grill. Wishbone. wishbone. Yeah, wishbone grill. I don't know why the name escaped me, but um it's uh there were some good things that's where i got the wings that it was uh some good food there too so you yeah you really want to you want to go there and you want to try the different things so you know not everything is is going to be on the dining plan but 
you know, try it out. Uh, you're going to have some taste that you're not going to get any other time. And it's really going to elevate your experience by, by trying the different treats of that around the park. Yeah. So, okay. This is the one time I'm going to make this monologue because I'm usually like, I, I don't, I don't want to sell stuff on behalf of other people unless I'm collecting a commission. But if you have the dining plan, great. You use the hell out of it. Don't deny yourself some of these special treats and stuff. Like, Make it part of your experience. You know, if you yeah. see something that looks good, d- just do it because it's unique. You can't get it every day. I mean, you want to have another pub. Bur- I mean, you want to have another pub burger, but the average person, do they want another pub burger? You want La Rosa's again? Try something new. You know, it- it's like entertainment costs money and sometimes food is entertainment. I-, I have the dining plan and I often do like when they do the international restaurant, that's like $30, $40, but it's a wonderful experience when they do that. So I almost always, you know, buy into that, but um, you got to participate. It, it, they do such a good job. And especially like, you know, we mentioned the sweet spot several times. Um, the stuff that they have for Halloween is just incredible. Yeah. You're going to be talking about that on your way home. If you try these different, uh, you know, menu items, the treats and that, that they have, that's going to be a topic of discussion in your car. Be thinking about that, talking about that as much as, you know, those rides on the beast and diamondback and, you know, some of the other things that you might do during the day. Yeah. Um, so they are going to have, uh, I don't have a qual- high quality image, but I'll use it anyway. But uh, the Fantastics are going to be back. That's our friend, uh, Jessica. Jessica, yeah. And Hi-Fi Honey, you know, which is, uh, you know, Kings Island's had two house bands now, I feel like, because they had the River City band, but they're still around, but they're not, as consistent but now mm-hmm. hi-fi honey seems to be the cover band that king's island hires for everything you know yeah. what uh, they're very very good band uh the guests you know they love that band uh, so yeah i mean it works yeah um very nice people just and one of the most genuine people i've ever met you know so uh, definitely check them out. I, I'm not sure where they're going to be, but in the past several years, they've had set up a temporary stage immediately outside of the fest house. The fest, so. Yeah, that's a great. There's tables, you know, chairs and things for you to, to sit and enjoy the music. Uh, but that's part of the experience. You know, you you want to sit and watch the Fantastics and uh, the costumes that they wear are really cool. Yeah, we uh, check out. We've had a previous episode with, uh, and she also plays Holly Holiday occasionally, the guitar girl uh, on the at Winterfest. Yeah, behind the the macaroni, because it's not Hanks anymore. It's like Chris Kringle's macaroni stand. I don't know, um, but uh, yeah, very cool. So, um, uh, the Charlie Brown and the gang from the popular Peanuts comics will be featured in a Halloween show titled The Monsters Are Coming, Charlie Brown. That's a fun show for kids. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the the characters dressed up in the costumes and stuff. It's yeah, funny I mean, because it's, fun. it, it's um when they announced uh, Mickey's Not So Scary this year, the big headliner was that Mickey got a new costume. So it shows you that stuff does matter. You know? It does matter. Yeah. And it's, you know, again, it makes the great photo opportunity with the family to, you know, get the Peanuts characters, you know, dressed up in their costumes. Something that you don't get during the summer, right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Tricks and treats. Uh, it's going to be 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. starting Sunday, September 22nd, running through November 3rd. So make sure you check it out. Uh, Don, Tower Topics t-shirts. These have become immensely popular with uh, fans of the show. You can get yours for just $22. They come in a Carolina blue color, any size that you want. So if you're interested in one, send us a direct message on our X. It's tower underscore topics. And if you don't have X, you can message us through, uh, you know, if you're watching the YouTube version, just you know, put it in the comments. You know, we'll reach out. We'll figure out a way to connect with you. We'll send you the QR code. And after... Uh, and the transaction has been made. It just takes a matter of days to get your shirt and uh, very comfortable uh, shirt. So, uh, and everyone that uh, has gotten one so far, you know, tells us that they really enjoy it. They, they think it's a good fit, very comfortable. One of their favorite t-shirts now. You want to hear, uh, I, I, I completely forgot to tell you about this. I was at Epcot the other day and some, somebody came up to me and they said, I have a Tower Topics t-shirt. 
It wasn't like, hey, I know who you are. I watched the show. They said, hey, Ryan, I've got a Tower Topics t-shirt. And I kept walking. <laughs> well, that's that's good. Uh, you know, I saw some at some other parks. I, I saw some people wearing Tower Topics t-shirts at places like uh, you know, Holiday World, mm-hmm. Dollywood, Cannywood. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're, they're all over the place now. But, you know, Ryan, you did a great job with that logo. And I think that's what makes the shirt you know, as popular as it is, because that logo is, is, is really dynamic, I think. Yeah, I think it turned out really cool. I mean, I, I, I don't really want to, I can only take partial credit because I can't draw, I can't paint. I did it in like a 3D software. So I feel like the software did the heavy lifting, but uh, nonetheless, you know, you, you see it on the screen with that animation, but $22, including shipping. We love to see them around. We'll be right back with the listener questions. All right, first listener question. Jessica B. from Middletown, Ohio. I missed the meetup you guys did a few weeks ago. Any chance of doing one during Haunt? I think that would be a little hard to do with Haunt because for the meetup that we did, it was during Grand Carnival, we had a chance to all watch the parade together. And then kind of, uh, you know, we went over and rode the carousel. And then, you know, we had kind of an informal little Q&A. So I think it worked for that. Haunt, I'm be fun to do but i don't know what that would involve where everybody you know was kind of together you know doing this all at the same time you know unless it was one of those you know let's all go through you know hotel saint michelle and then after that we'll all go do a night ride on the beast you know maybe something like that can work Mm -hmm. um so ryan and i will talk about it we'll see yeah if if not then certainly Winterfest. we can probably repeat the Winterfest lends itself to it perfect yeah for that yeah and there'll be some yeah. off-season things too when the park is closed because you're gonna you know you're gonna be missing king's island and uh, we'll certainly want to get you know everyone together to do some some different things yeah unfortunately uh entertainment junction will be out of the picture for the next one uh unless we go in january but uh yeah we we'd love to meet you jessica um we'll keep you informed you know we'll find something uh, next listener question, Josh S. from Cincinnati, Ohio. There's work going on in the Son of Beast station. Could it really be returning as rumored? Let it go. Do you think that um, King's Island is insane? Because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing twice and assuming there's going to be different results. Right. Son of Beast did nothing for the park on a pot. It was like it probably got them some pretty good attention in 2000 when it opened and stuff. It was expensive. Everybody hated it. I know you're going to have a few people in the comments like, oh, I loved it, but the vast majority of the public hated it. It was rough. People got hurt on it. It hurt the reputation of the park. I couldn't. You saw fathom. people ride it one time, and then this is before mobile apps and that. So they would get off the ride, they would pull out their park map. All right. What's next, Johnny? What else can we do? They weren't looking forward to getting right back in line and riding that again, like you saw on just about every other ride in the park, except for that one. So, yeah, it was, uh, like I said, did have its its, its fans, uh, but, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, wasn't a fun and enjoyable experience for the majority. And I, you know, it's easy to toy with the, you know, the fans with some of these, especially this time of the year when they want to put out some different props and things around it. Uh, but anytime somebody cuts the grass around there or does some landscaping around that station, you know, everybody, oh, they're bringing back Son of Beast. What's going on? No, just, you know, I mean, it's it's not happening, you know. And, and it, the next time they do put in a major coaster, I think you got to look at the vortex spot is probably where it would go, right? Yeah. And, and uh, the, what I don't like about the question is that it's, uh, and this is not a shot at you, Josh. It's it's more like they're not going to bring back Son of Beast, like it's just no. not going to happen. Now with the vortex, that's marketable. There's nostalgia and stuff. So if they put in another looper in that spot and call it the new vortex, or like there's something there. I'm not saying yeah, that's vortex two or vortex two whatever it was. Yeah, I mean there's an opportunity there to do something like that. Uh, but I think there was just so much negativity surrounding Son of Beast that there's no way that anyone in their right mind would say this is a good idea to name a ride son of beast i've i've heard um from outside of the park that like gci or gravity group when when 
Mystic was coming in, they pitched the idea of like, oh, we can do inversions and the park shut it down real quick. Like, we're not the park for that. You know, but inversions on a wooden coaster. Then they're know, done that, got the t-shirts, right? Yeah, I got so the no, t-shirts. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to do that. No, I mean, it's, I think sometimes you see these different YouTubers out there and that, that they put stuff out there as clickbait just to, you know, drive viewers to their thing with their speculation about this and that. And they know there's nothing there you know, when they go with that. So it's just a, a way to get some clicks in that, but nothing's, you know, you're not going to see that ride return. I mean, it was retired, not coming back. Yeah. I, I, the best hope for that station is if they do another haunt in there. Um, I feel like they haven't maybe because they can't. Could always use like, another bar. You know, you're on to, because they can't have a, they can't put a bar in the French corner and not put one of the Son of Beast station because that would make the park wobbly, right? It wouldn't weigh the same on all sides. <laughs> yeah, you could you could yeah. reconfigure, put a new floor down in that, and you know, um, you know, make it a little mini museum or something in there. Or Don, 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 what? VIP lounge. There you go. Right. Just enclose it, air condition it, put in TVs, make it two floors. Then you got King's Dominions. You would, you definitely would, uh, but you know the the well. Then you're off the beaten path a little bit for the VIP lounge. I don't know. I think I don't think it needs to, to be because it's not something of like oh VIP lounge. Let's go in there. It's if you buy the prestige pass, you know the benefits you're getting, and the VIP lounge is one of the benefits. And the prestige people know the park too, so it's you're not gonna miss it. Like I, I think that that would be perfect because you could hide. That is the not a, you know, Ryan, you were onto something. You know, when we talked, oh, was, I don't know what it was about thirty episodes ago or something about different places in the park that could, you know, do a VIP lounge like Kings of Indian has. You know, we talked about the old time photos place, but maybe not big enough there. Um, yeah, I think something like that. The Son of East Station has plenty of room in there to to make something that you know you said could have two different levels. You know, it, it could be Kings Dominion like and. Uh, be a little nostalgia there that you're in an old roller coaster station. So maybe, maybe, maybe you're on a blender. I'll, I'll render the, um, the son of B station, but I'll make it like the dream VIP lounge. So it'll be two floors and I'll have like a fire pole between the two floors. Now, what do you do with the one that's there now? Bulldoze make it a it. bar. <laughs> make it a bar. Yeah. You're right. Cause that's like kind of in the middle of the park. So you can make it a bar there and it won't tilt anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely too many bars around the park. I, make I, that one for the make that one for the older guests. Call that one forty one and older. Forty one and colder. That's a, yeah, it's that's for middle aged dead people. Forty one and colder. <laughs> yeah, something like I don't know. What else we got? I don't know, but I feel like on these episodes when it's like the last one we record, we definitely go off the rails because we had show and tell last time. I wonder how many to go off the around rails. for that. You, you have to go. We do have to do a show and tell episode. Um, you know, at some point here, maybe once the season ends, we'll do one and just kind of all of our King's Island kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, what we have. Well, um, let me show you what I've got here. Uh, but I said for sticking around. So this is the gift I'm going to give my sister-in-law. This is a, uh, Epcot food and wine. It's her birthday the other day. Uh, but it's like a glove. Do you see it? And it's upside down. Not, wow. Do I see sorry. it? What kind sorry, of question not. is that to me? <laughs> No, no, it sounds offense. good. It sounds good, Ryan. I can't. Can, can you hear really... them flapping together? Uh, yeah, I can so, hear them flapping together. So I got um, a, it's a cooking mitt as well as a pot holder. I've got the Mickey. Actually, I bought this for somebody. The Mickey's not so scary pin. Yeah, I've got stickers because it's UOAP days. So I got stickers saying we love our annual pass holders. I've got the tenth anniversary. This is all just sitting on my desk. This is how messy my desk is. I'm not completely unpacked yet. Ten year anniversary of Diagon Alley pin. That's kind of cool. Hey, we can auction all these off, and it can, you know, well, help all pay these some of the medical are, expenses are I'm, for. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. incurring here with my eye issue. They're they're, they're these are all screen used because they've been on the show. Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's um, we both got a lot of treasure trove of of different things that we could show and i think people would have interest in in what we have in our possession yeah. millennium force pen this is not that interesting <laughs> all right well that was fun while it lasted hey i'm ryan sir along with don helbig and this is tower topics <laughs>